from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. We've been on hiatus for a little while for election coverage, and we're really happy to be back tonight. Tonight we have a special show. We're going to feature a couple of local theater groups. The first one is the Curious Comedy Theater from Portland. They're located on Northeast MLK, not far from where I live, and it's on my to-do list to get there and see one of your shows before the end of, this, uh, end of the year. So tonight to represent the Curious Comedy Theater, we have Greg Chassie, who is the food and beverage director and a performer at uh, Curious Comedy Theater. Welcome, Greg. Thanks. And also Jed Arkley, who's the associate artistic director. All right, thank Good you. Good to have you here. Yeah, glad to be here. Good. Um, maybe one of you can tell me to start out a little bit about the Curious Comedy Theater. I understand it is a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. What, what is the mission? What's the purpose of, um, you know, obviously it's not a, a for-profit theater, so why did this come about? Uh, yeah, we're the only nonprofit dedicated strictly to the art of comedy. Uh, our founder, Stacy Halal, decided we want a place that will not just entertain, but improve the lives of kids, adults, and seniors. Through comedy. Through comedy. comedy. I love it. Yeah. And, and what, what better thing? I mean, obviously, when people laugh, it makes you feel better. Yeah. So yeah. How, how do you go about doing that? Is it just through performances or, or what else is going on at the theater? Well, at, at a regular show, uh, we like to integrate performance and make something tasty that's cheap. Uh, make something tasty that's cheap? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Explain that to me, Greg. Uh, everything we do, we, we try to do with love and we try to make it accessible for everybody. Okay. Uh, I've been to so many comedy clubs around the country that it kind of feels like you're getting robbed. Uh, okay, <laughs> you know? okay. And the prices are very reasonable. And we can't yeah. say yeah. prices on the air sure. here, but, but I know from looking at it, they're very, very reasonable. They're very, yeah. They are accessible. And that's they? part of like, yeah, our mission is that like, to, to create a space, not only the physical space where we're at, that it's, it's warm and inviting to not only the comedians uh, and the other performers, but to the audience as well. So it doesn't feel like it's an intimidating place to walk into. I mean, and that sort of fits into our mission of, you know, providing, improving people's lives through comedy is not making it feel like, you know, your standard comedy club, which sometimes has a bad rap. But, right. Um, right. but we do have, but that's, you know, we, we go out to, you know, we'll talk about the various programs maybe later, but we go out to middle schools to help kids um, with literacy by they'll be writing stories and then we'll perform the stories we've gone to um, done improv with Alzheimer's patients uh, so at great. a couple um, like long-term care homes and uh, and then besides that then we're just teaching improv all the time you know anyone can come in and drop in and, That's great. and take classes so, so it's not just yeah. performance by any means yeah. we have a short video that you brought mm -hmm. that I think would be a good time for us to take a look at yeah. that now it might give us kind of an overview of the club so I think we should Take a look now. All right. All right. Welcome to the Curious Comedy Theater, Portland's only 501c3 nonprofit theater devoted entirely to the art of comedy. Curious Comedy's mission is to improve the lives of kids, adults, and seniors through the art of comedy. We have shows every weekend at our home theater. These shows rotate between improv, sketch, stand-up, kids shows, and more, pushing the boundaries of comedy with bold, original programming and primarily featuring local talent. We also teach classes at our theater because we believe improv enriches lives. Whether you want a career in comedy or are simply looking to build valuable life skills, like listening, teamwork, thinking on your feet, and accepting mistakes. Right now, we have three outreach programs in progress. The New Memories program partnered this year with Vital Life, a Marquis and Kinsanis Foundation, to improve the quality of life of Alzheimer's patients through improv comedy. 
The facility's staff has been effusive in their feedback. They have noted uh, patient agitation has decreased, their moods and awareness has been elevated, and they've even noted physical and mental improvements. I mean, we always believed in the potential of this program, but we've been blown away by such positive, visible change in such a short period of time. The Play on Words program aims to improve literacy rates in low-income neighborhood schools. Pal partnered with Julia Collins of the Bridger Elementary School using improv exercises to teach kids writing skills. Where writing was previously kind of more personal and private and a very like solo activity, now kids are getting to work with each other and collaborate and hear each other's ideas. Then the POW teaching artists turn the kids' stories into sketches and songs to be performed by the curious comedy actors. We got to play games about how to, like, we play games like they acted out bits of it and then we said, oh, I need to work more on how it looks on the, how it looks, or I need to work with more sensory details and that helped a lot. And it was still fun. This fall, Curious Comedy will premiere at the All Jane No Dick Comedy Festival. Women are grossly underrepresented in the comedy industry. This all female comedy festival will create a place for women comedians to network, gain experience, be inspired, and be seen by audiences and industry representatives. There are a lot of reasons and a lot of ways to be a part of the Curious Comedy community. See you at the theater. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> have, have you, either of you, been involved in some of that outreach, like with the Alzheimer's patients or the kids? I don't know if you saw Jed was oh, in. Jed. Yeah, he was in that one. Ninety yeah. percent of that footage. Just <laughs> <laughs> make brief cameos. Yeah. 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 Um, no, but I was involved in the, um, well, a couple of them, both the uh, the play on words, where you know we took the kids had been writing stories with a with a mentoring teacher for weeks or so, so I kind of came in, or months, and I came in at the end where we took the stories, we would literally take their handwritten stories and then we would all hang out on a Sunday and turn them into plays. And that was really fun because their stories were just, they're nuts. I mean, they're so, <laughs> like the plot, you can never get these sort of plot points in trying to figure out how to turn it into a production. And when the kids saw it, they were just thrilled because um, it was really neat for them to see that their writing could be translated, and I remember asking afterwards. We sort of met the kids, and I said, "Did you like?" Asked one of the girls. I said, "Did you think this this actually represented what you wrote?" She goes, "Yeah, it had the right feel. It had the right." I love it. And so that's good because it's really neat. It's another form of writing, you know, for the stage, and but just it really got their imaginations flowing, and just yeah. So that was that was fantastic. I can imagine that it really encourages kids to continue yeah. writing and to explore their imaginations and to you know, to try to be creative. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. really. You see these connections be made. It's the same thing with the Alzheimer's, and the same thing <coughs> with us, why we fell in love with the theater. Just these connections are being made, and all of a sudden you see these new avenues that wow. you've never yeah. seen before, and you realize that so much more is possible. Yeah, yeah. and that's, and adding on, like with the, the Alzheimer's patients, what was so fantastic about that is because when we do these simple improv exercises with, um, with, you know, it's a varying degrees of Alzheimer's, but some, you know, very severe cases, um, we're not asking them to remember anything, you know? We're asking them, and this was called new memories, you know, but it's like, and there's been some research shown that like that's perhaps a better way to approach rehabilitation because you, we're just saying like, say yes, like literally look and someone say yes, and that, or just what am I doing? Oh, you're fishing, but it doesn't have to be, where did you live? Do, can you remember your, right, right. your, your wife's name? Or can you so remember? they're not set up for a failure. They're not getting frustrated. And so yeah. it becomes really fun. And it's just, and then you see, you see people, their humor just come through. You mentioned um, something just kind of behind the scenes while we were watching that one. Yeah. One woman who was on there, you said, oh, she's so funny. Oh, she's just so funny. And like, we had one guy who uh, once, when we were doing this, and I was like, okay, what am I doing? What am I doing? And everybody's like, oh, you know, you're brushing your teeth and, and Jim wasn't doing it. And I said, Jim, Jim, what am I doing? And he's like, huh? And I said, I'm brushing my teeth. How do you brush your teeth? And then he literally, he, he took out his dentures. <laughs> and he had, but then he started laughing because he knew he was making a good joke. Yeah. Like, and we all busted up and 
So yeah, that's great. it was really cool. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so you have um, several shows that are coming up. I know um, Friday, the 16th of November, you have Fear Factor Canine Edition mm -hmm. by John Grady. What, what does that mean, Canine uh, Edition? What does that refer I mean, obviously that refers to dogs, but yeah. what, what, what's that all about? It's about his life with his Ber Bernese Mountain Dog. Oh, big dog. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, it takes him from New York and Chicago beyond and uh, it ends up being kind of a therapeutic story. Yeah. And even not, though you not all comedy, maybe a little right, bit. Right. Even though you laugh, you too. end up crying. Uh, yeah. Uh, it won it won awards all over Canada, and then the LA Times called it a theatrical experience that not to miss. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, okay, that sounds that sounds like a good one. Um, also, you have the complete history of the mustache. <laughs> yeah. the Christian, is it Reimer? Yeah. Reimer. Yeah. Okay. Um, complete history of the mustache. Are these all the Canadian? Yeah. Oh, so this is part of the Canadian invasion. Yeah, past, these are the past last three two. weekends have been all all groups from Canada that Stacy met when she was futzing around there this this summer. So. Yeah, she takes her show <laughs> on the road too. Oh, okay. Yeah. And she's the founder. Yeah, Stacy's yeah. the, the yeah the artistic director. Okay. We just had the uh, progressive polygamist last weekend. <laughs> yeah, the progressive poly <laughs> polygamist. I, I read about that. How did that go over? It was amazing. Was it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and now we've become good friends. Uh, one of them was going to leave tonight, and instead she'll leave next week because she wants to stay and yeah. hang out and maybe that's perform right. a little more. And yeah, oh, that's, that's what awesome. Curious Comedy does to people. <laughs> so it feels like, it, it almost seems like it's more of a, a family atmosphere. It, it really of, like is. Everybody really gets to know each other and, they, and you learn to play off each other yeah. and, and learn from each other. Yeah, and it's very, it's very like Portland that way, like, or very supportive like in the comedy you know, it's good to have a comedy scene where it doesn't feel as cutthroat or as um, competitive. And certainly, we're trying to do as best we can, and we want to be known as like, yeah, you know, like the best comedy theater in town. Sure, but it's at the same time you get so much more talent, and you discover people who can be really funny. I just know so many stand-ups, especially who come into our room and play there, that maybe they get a more of a chance, I think, at Curious, you yeah. know, a chance to work stuff out. And then we have comedians who are well-known, or, you know, in, in town who do try out brand new characters or bits, and that's always really fun, because they know that the crowd will be like, oh, okay, hey, you so know. So it's a pretty supportive crowd, yeah. no matter yeah. what. And, yeah. and people are, have the opportunity to try things out and to really um, craft their, their comedic yeah. skills, I imagine. Oh, definitely. So how long have both of you been involved in comedy? Um, I've been involved just over five years yeah. uh, at the theater since the beginning. Oh, wow. Uh, so that's four years. Wow. We opened 2008, about a month ago, four yeah. years ago. Yeah. Cool. And it's doing well, <coughs> is it not? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we see constant growth, and there's always room for more. That's great. Yeah. great. And, and before, I want to talk about the, the next um, show that you have, the Fruitcake Holiday Show. But before yeah. we talk about that, there, at, at, besides the classes and the outreach and all that, you can eat and drink there, right? I mean, there is a, is, is it a uh, restaurant? Tell well, me what that's like there. Great. Um, yeah, I create a new special menu every week. Every week there's uh, a new menu. And, and that's on your website, isn't it? Uh -huh, you yeah. post it up mm -hmm. there what, what, what the menu is. Is yeah. that correct? So and that. Some I, of them look pretty darn good. I make sure I keep half of it vegetarian. Nice. Uh, it's all organic and local. Uh, I love it. Some from our friends at Cougar Farms. Uh -huh. uh, some that we grew in our garden this summer. Uh, and I try to make it healthy and cheap. And so far, yeah, it's really so good. far, everybody loves it. Okay, yeah. great. Well, that, that that entices me there too. <laughs> and fancy cocktails that you and come up with. And fancy cocktails, yeah. nice. Different names good. for cocktails. Okay. Yeah. Well, the last um, one that you were telling me about was a fruitcake holiday show with Night Flight Aerialists. Mm -hmm. And um, tell me a little bit about that while we, we have some pictures from okay. that. So I think we're going to show some of the pictures. But tell me what that, what that show is all about. Yeah, so that's our holiday show. And uh, we do it every year. Yep, there's some aerialists right there. And um, yeah, so <laughs> we've, we've been involved with Night Flight um, for years now, I think since the beginning. Um, and the fellow on the right, he was at the last show. Um, Gregory is his name, but he played the Christmas Krumpus. I can't remember. <laughs> it was some, was it Norwegian? It's skin? a demon that yeah. uh, hurts 
bad children <laughs> for Christmas. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he did, but so what we'll do is we'll do, um, it's kind of a funny pairing when you think about it, but we'll do some improv based around, um, audience members will come and write Christmas stories for us, or uh, not Christmas uh. stories, like Christmas memories, like, oh, I remember when I was seven and I went downstairs and I found this present, or they're often, they're often very traumatic stories or very funny or stories. They expected this and didn't get yeah. that, or this happened. So you yeah. get a lot of like emotion and and uh, and and feel in the show. But so we'll read those stories and then we'll do some improv for about you know 15 minutes based on it. And um, well, how do the aerialists fit? They into just that? go in between. So like we'll do it and then they'll come. Then we'll sort of do a set and then they'll do they'll do um, oh, okay. they'll do some of their aerialists. So while you're act. working out the details of this. <coughs> This improv? Well, we'll do the improv. We'll just sort of read the just story, do it. do it, boom. It's fun because we get to become audience members yeah. at that time too. Oh, but it's fun. a fun, yeah. So it's a, it's kind of a if you're if you're looking for something to do this holiday season. <laughs> but it's good because it's got comedy and they're just they're amazing athletes and uh, performers. And so we just it's it's a great marriage because it gives you um it, it's like a spectacle with them and then with us we're a bunch of goofballs. So there you go, <laughs> boom, high lowbrow. <laughs> I love it. It sounds like fun. So before we run out of time, tell me, what is the most compelling reason to go to the Curious Comedy Theater? What do you think people should, why, why should they go? Every week it's going to be something brand new. And if you don't like it one week, try it the next week. Exactly. You might like it better. That's exactly yeah. right. Uh, and it'll really just open your eyes to see something, some variety that you haven't seen and you will not see again. It's kind of a different a different yeah. thing to do. It's I mean I would think it'd be a great date night thing to yeah, do. You know? Really and we saw like, you, know, really you want something is. different to do. Yeah. And the space is beautiful and um, and like Greg said, like we get every weekend we have um, you know, we have runs of shows, but then we get these groups in from Canada and then we have stand up nights and then we have these um, nights where Attack of the Flicks, where they show these films, and so I think you know if you look at our calendar, we just have such a variety. And then I think we're also you know a, a reason to come is like we have we have really high standards about what we put on. So I think um, our shows are we do great improv, we have great stand-ups, and yeah. then we sketch. get sketch, we so, sketch, and shows. the food's good, and the drinks are good. Well, and the fact that you're uh, a member of the community and that you actually are doing good things out in the community, yeah. it's not just about the comedians themselves, yeah, which yeah. is great, but it's about improving the lives of the community, and I think that's yeah. pretty that's pretty special. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got you this T-shirt. From, <laughs> you did? Oh, from I our love last it! Show. Oh, nice! Oh, <laughs> it's from our all women's comedy all festival. All no dick. I yeah. just love that. So that's now we have, awesome. Now we Thank have you. new friends from all over the continent, and great. who were all funny. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so, very much. Yeah. I will wear this proudly. And I will be there. That's my, my goal. That's I will be there <laughs> for the end of the year. In fact, I want to take my daughter down there. I think we'd have a ball down there. Yeah. And she's vegetarian, so she can you know, get in on your, Perfect. on your food there, too. So that's super. Thanks so much, guys, for being on here mm -hmm. today. Looking forward to seeing some of these shows. Um, sounds like you're doing a great job. And if people are interested in donating, volunteering, being part of it, or just attending a performance, um, then go to your website and yep. check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Great. Thanks for watching this first segment of Community Hotline. Glad to have you with us. Don't go away. We'll be right back. are the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. 
Want to help homeless animals? There are countless volunteer opportunities with Multnomah County Animal Services. There's always a lot to do when caring for almost 10,000 animals a year. Our shelter is at the forefront of animal care with some of the most progressive programs in the nation, and we depend on volunteers to keep those programs running. From showing cats to potential owners, to training dogs in the shelter, to fostering a shelter pet in your home, you can help your community by volunteering your time and talents with Animal Services. To find out more about this volunteer opportunity, visit their website. To explore other volunteer opportunities, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Shape your community. Volunteer. KZMU Radio is a new station that is committed to entertain, inspire, and connect our community through programming that celebrates local music, arts, and culture. It was created to put local music and local arts on local radio, and it is a vehicle for our creative community to gain exposure while also celebrating what the Portland metro area has to offer. Hey folks, I'm Mike Midlow from the band Pancake Breakfast. What's so cool about KZME? Well, it's local music. You know, you can't go to every live show. Believe me, I've tried. So you can tune into KZME and hear a bunch of music that you might not get to see otherwise. Why should you support KZME? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you like Portland Town, USA, homegrown music, independent radio, and if you believe in the powers of rock and roll, then contribute to KZME. It's music where you live. My favorite thing about community media is how people find their voice and tell their story. It's the message of, by, and for a community. We're a gathering place because it gets people of all sorts of different backgrounds underneath one roof. It's art. It's technology. A snapshot of our community. Going live in three, two, one. The League of Women Voters makes history. Our country would not be the same without their dedication. Formed by women who organize to win women the right to vote. It is now a co-ed organization. Studying, informing, and acting. Nonpartisan. Grassroots. Influential. Taking political stance on many issues. The League of Women Voters encourages all citizens to be informed and active in government. Join, Join the, the League, League of Women, Women Voters, Voters of East Multnomah, Multnomah County, County in, in making history, history today. today. Hi, I'm Luke Perry. You're watching Metro East. Over 25 years of great community media. is limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. Glad you stayed with us, because tonight now we have with us from the Sandy Actors Theater and Readers Theater of Gresham, Tim Park, who is the director of the Leading Ladies performance at Sandy Actors Theater, and Kathy Strickland is the producer. Thanks so much for being here, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Tim, you've been my guest several times. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Yes. Kathy, this is okay. your first time on the yes, show? Yes, it is. Yes, good. Well, you'll, you'll be back again. Always a pleasure. Are you Thank saying you. that sincerely? I, I mean it. I mean <laughs> okay. it. I mean it. I, I, you're, you're always a, a good guest, Tim. So um, tell, just for those who may not have caught a, a previous uh, you know, appearance by the infamous okay. Tim Park, tell us a little bit about... Um, the theaters themselves and, and what you do in the community. Okay, Sandy Actors Theater has been around since 1976. Uh, it's one of the oldest community theaters in Oregon. We do five main stage shows per year, starting in September and going through until June. Then we also have another program called Reader Theater Gresham, which we do in Gresham, obviously. Yes. <laughs> and that is where we uh, do 
a single performance once a month uh, from October through May. And the, that is a reader's theater performance where there, there's no uh, set or costumes or anything, any amenities that, right. you know, along with the script. Uh, the, the emphasis is on the text itself, and it's pretty amazing the effect that that just has when people are simply reading. They're actually acting, definitely. It's, right, right. You know, I know. I, the first time I heard about that, I was a little, a little confused, even though I knew about, about Reader's Theater, but trying to imagine as the actor if that was harder or easier. And I think it would be harder to be able to convey well, some of it. I don't know, what, do you, what really. do you think, I, no? If, if you know the storyline when you're going in, uh -huh. you can certainly convey, just like you do on stage, and uh, it, to the audience, especially the older audience that used to sit around and listen to the radio, to the radio this sure. is what yeah. it's all about. And yeah. you can literally close your eyes and imagine you're sitting in front of the radio listening to an old show. Well, I've seen uh, you know a couple snippets of, of, of some of the performances, and they're pretty amazing. They're pretty amazing. Although I would say that doing a full show is a lot lot more work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it sure well, just, I mean, just the, you know, the set design itself well, and, and the, you know, the costumes and everything yes. else is, is a huge thing right and, there. And figuring out all the movement and the, uh, getting the timing right and the memorizing lines and the interaction Watching between and all, stuff, yeah. all the characters. Uh, Tim and I seem to choose the very hardest do ones, you? do we? Do you? Well, this, this has been a, uh, a good, a great show now, but it's not been an easy show no, to put together. Okay, so tell me, uh, Kathy, maybe you could tell me a little bit about Leading Ladies. What is that show about? Well, it's about a couple of down and out Shakespearean actors from England who have come to their lowest point where they're playing, their, their big show, their big gig is at the local uh, Moose Lodge in Pennsylvania, in Shrewsbury, <laughs> Pennsylvania. Okay. And they read an article in the paper stating that uh, a millionaire woman is giving away some of her millions and she's dying and, and she's looking for her lost relatives. Well, not reading the full article, they find out that it's, it's not nieces, but, I mean, not nephews, but nieces that she's looking for, but they're assuming that it's nephews. And so th that's where the whole con <laughs> comes about. And so they decide to keep going ahead with the whole idea yes. even after they find out that it's nieces, which makes for an awful lot of twists in the plot uh, and, a lot and of some costumes. very confusing relationships. <laughs> so, the, the, so the leads are men. The yes. leads yeah, are the Now I think we have men. some pictures from that. So maybe we can show some of those pictures from Leading Ladies and maybe you can kind of walk us through and tell us okay. what we're looking at in that. So um, I should say this is written by Ken Ludwig, who's one of the best known comedy writers, um, playwrights in America. He wrote Lend Me a Tenor and a number of other shows that have been on Broadway. So it is, um, it is hilarious and I just happened to bring the review that was in the paper and it says, Leading Ladies Rocks Sat. And nice. it does rock. Yes. Cool. <laughs> so. Nice review then, huh? So what are we looking at here? Well, these are our lovely ladies here with oh, they're lovely. Uh, Doc, <laughs> and um, they're just now meeting the crowd in this one. They're just now meeting the people at this nice home in York, Pennsylvania, and setting their characters up. Yes, and see, they have the costumes from, they only have seven costumes because they're pretty, like she said, down and out. But um, one of them is Cleopatra, and the other is um, <laughs> Titania, Titania, the Queen of the Fairies from Midsummer oh, Night's yes. Dream. So they're wearing With those the fairy wings, wings. Yes. because yes. that's all they have. <laughs> oh, how funny is that? <laughs> oh, and this is, and so they decide to do a performance of Twelfth Night, and Leo, who's really the the spearheading everything and the whole idea, Jack, his friend, follows along. Um, he gets the idea that the, the group of people at the house will do this performance at Twelfth Night, and this is one of our younger actors. And I'm telling you, I've got to put it is, this. It's hilarious. This, he is the funniest character. I mean, he has it down pat. He, his line is, but I look like a broomstick. A broom, a broom with shoes broom on. broom with shoes on. And, <laughs> and he's so funny. It's, 
so funny. I, I crack it. up every time. <laughs> and this is in the front here is Aunt Florence, who um, seems to die about five different times during yeah. the play, oh, and somehow yes. how comes back to life. And this is her having her first attack, uh, where she's gotten so mad at Doc that she has a heart attack. But wow. she survives and continues to survive because she's just too stubborn to die. Oh, okay. Right. Um, die. She's a very funny character. And a romance ensues. I mean, this is what it's all about. Um, they just naturally are attracted to one another. Uh, even though Leo plays the part of a woman and himself in the play, Meg is attracted to him both as the woman and, <laughs> and the man. As... She confesses to him that she's very attracted to, to her and loves <laughs> her. <laughs> oh no, how funny. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's that's much great. more than that. <laughs> so it's, it, there's a lot to this play. It's there's a lot, a lot of to different this cast. How many, how many people hilarious. are in it? How, many, uh, how, how big is your cast? There's eight. Eight people in the cast? Eight, eight well, plus nine, nine, nine altogether, yeah. okay. yes. Okay. And, it, and it builds. You know, it starts out where you're learning all of the characters uh -huh. and all of the scenes and where they're at, the actual placement, and it, and it builds and it builds. When we get to the second half, I'm telling you, there's no stopping. Uh -huh. And I tell people, you know, exercise their, their cheeks before <laughs> they come. They're because going to be hurting, they, they? Yes, we laugh so much. I've seen it, I don't know how many times, and Tim, of course, too, and I, I can't stop laughing every time I see I it. it. I, I have great. never stopped enjoying watching it. That's, and pretty, I've that's seen really it. saying something for the producer and the director to not be sick and tired of it. We've got yeah. such a fabulous cast. The and, cast is amazing. And they're so inventive, uh, creative. They've come up with some things just to add a little yeah. bit to yeah. it and make it interesting. Well, they're professionals, even, you know, even they, if they're not. They being, are professionals. <laughs> These guys are yeah. professionals. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's, 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 it's I was fun. really, really pleased getting this cast. Wow. I was told by someone, um, Tobias Anderson, in fact, yes. that yeah, ninety Tobias. percent of a good show is finding the right cast, and we found. Doesn't that feel good? Absolutely. We had the auditions, cast. and we looked at each other after the auditions, and how can we be so lucky? Yeah. Isn't that great? <laughs> it wasn't it's so hard. nice when everything comes together, huh? Yes. Right. So, right. so this this performance will go on until December second. Yes, right. is that mm -hmm. correct? Right. Okay, and this right. is at the Sandy Actors Theater in right. Sandy. In Sandy, in yes. Sandy. Okay. right and behind right. Ace Hardware. Oh, of course. And, and reservations <laughs> are strongly yes. No, they are recommended uh, to get recommended res or reservations. more than recommended. So they you, do you're need doing to call. well, especially if you're getting this kind of a review. Yes. Then, well, we had the, just. We had the best opening weekend we've ever had. Oh, yes, wonderful. we had a full house on Sunday afternoon. We had to turn a number of people yes. away, wow. which I don't like doing, but we don't have any place. Yeah, what do you do? Place, what do you do? So. Huh, that's, yeah. that's great. What a we great have deal. people coming as far away as Sherwood, Salem, yeah. uh, you know, different places. Kathy, yeah. how long have you been involved with the theater? Since the board re, um, reorganized in 2000. Five, I believe it was. Yeah. Do you I have a history of acting or producing? None or whatsoever. It was really? always my inspiration, but really? never had the, the nerve. So how to did do you it. happen to get into this? I and mean, what what Well, what I was just asked it? to come on board as as the secretary. They needed a secretary on the board, uh -huh. and you know everything goes from there. I've volunteered for various things all uh -huh. my life, and this was just another volunteer opportunity. But obviously, one that. Kind of she's done you. an awful lot. I, 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 she's the sec the, not the secretary, but the treasurer <laughs> now. And she has been a producer. Twice. She was the producer for the play I did last spring also. I bet you that's and something you thought you'd we do. We were in a show about you're two years ago show. together. So you act also. Yes, so I, yeah, I did. She yes, has yes. Done <laughs> lights and sound. And, oh, see, and um, isn't that great to, to start out volunteering at something and end up learning all sorts of new things. Well, this that brings up life. something really important, and that's that <laughs> yes. um, Sandy Actors Theater is an all-volunteer organization, and we do some really good shows, um, and quite a few of them for a small theater. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you do, you do. But yes, it's do. all volunteers, and we always need more people. So you need more people. I'm sure you can always use donations of money and, and, oh, and, and whatever. Because we are a 501c3. Yes. Right, right. So people will write that off if they, you know, yeah, if they're, if they're right. a theater 
buffs and want to uh, mm -hmm. donate their money there. And as far as volunteers, if, if somebody were interested in, in becoming part of the Sandy Actors Theater, what, what kinds of, of things are available for them to do? <laughs> Let's Whatever the they ways. want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, the first wow. thing is we need people who are in construction and carpenters. Mm. Okay. Because we, um, right sets. now, are a little bit low on that and we need somebody to sort of act as a foreman oh. to build sets. Yeah. Um, we and have that's some something people I bet will a lot of help. Wouldn't think about it. And there's a lot of oh, people who have talent in that it's area. It's a huge thing. We've got yeah. to have sets. Since uh, the, the one you just saw it took us five weeks to build. Wow. So um, that's a big undertaking. We can always yeah. use more people okay. to do that. And then people just paint the sets and, yeah. okay. and decorate. And that's something and anybody could do with some supervision. You know, this is right. what we're looking for. Well, it's a joke around our place. Uh, volunteers can even clean the toilets. If they wow! Fly. How lucky! So, what a great yeah. deal! Uh, what a deal! <laughs> we have people that work concessions. We have people that um, operate the sound or the the light boards. Uh, and you can teach them if it's they don't know how to do that. It's a learning opportunity if that's what they want. And anybody can audition. To mm -hmm. perform. Yes. Yep. Um, you don't have to have any experience. How fun. Uh, so how fun. it's a it learning. It sounds like a really fun group to work it, with. We are a fun group. I, I've yeah. got to say that. I've been with them so long. It, it is like a family. Uh -huh. We all know each other. We're concerned about each other's families and what goes on in our lives. And we know that most of us are very, very dedicated to the theater and spend a lot of time there. Right, and right. Sometimes we have to explain that to our significant other. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm sure, and I'm sure you, you know, most of the people have other things going on in their lives, uh, full-time jobs, Absolutely. and you have a full-time job. Yeah. Are you retired yet? You were going to retire. <laughs> I remember you said that. Yes and yes no. And no. <laughs> yes and no. Okay. Yes. I remember you talked about that. Sort Is of. the post office? Yes. Yes, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to remember here. Yeah, so you know, most of the people probably have full-time jobs, have right. families, have other things going on in their life. So the volunteering takes a lot of time, but it sounds very rewarding. It is rewarding. So tell me a little bit about a, a couple more things you have going on. There's another performance um, going on December 14th and 15th. You better watch out. 14th, 15th, yes. and 16th. And 16th. Okay, tell yes. me about that. Well, we decided that we um, would try to do a Reader's Theater in Sandy. Uh, we thought about it for some time, but it came up that we really didn't have a purely Christmas show this year, and we thought that's an ideal time to do that. So we found a play called You Better Watch Out, and we are doing it as a Reader's Theater um, performance, which will be still pretty lively and exciting, a very, very sweet Christmas it's story. Very sweet. Good. Very. I shouldn't say sweet's not the word. Well, Very, it's it's touching, nostalgic, makes you laugh, makes you what cry. What were you saying, Kathy? <laughs> Santa Claus. Oh. <laughs> well, there's Santa Claus. There's a pregnant woman who's yeah. having a baby, and they're stuck in a snowstorm. Uh, you can yeah, tie yeah, all can, these yeah, things yeah, together. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it would be a, a and good appropriate holiday. This is our holiday. reward to our volunteers. This is what we thought we would do for them: is to invite all of the volunteers to come in and watch this and just as a thank you. Also our season pass holders are welcome to come too oh, and then nice. anyone else that isn't on that list, are, we're only charging eight dollars to see that show. So. All right, but so you better watch out fill. at the Sandy Actors Theater yes. and that will be a reading, it won't be the full, right. the full yes. performance. Okay. I get what to about, narrate that one. <laughs> pardon? I get to narrate that oh, one. Oh you do? <laughs> yes. Oh fun, fun. <laughs> How great to have so many things you can do there and and learn new things. Love I think it. that's great. I bet you do. <laughs> Broadway Bound by Neil Simon. Yes, that's our next Reader's Theater. And that's now we in Gresham. We take, yes, we take December off from the Gresham Reader's Theater program. Um, and so we'll start up again in January. And Broadway Bound is one of Neil Simon's classics. It's the last of his trilogy, which is an autobiographical trilogy, right, right. Um, which is, it's well, any Neil Simon is, play is this hilarious. Is fun. Yes, yes. they're all fun. They're all fun. So that'll be at the Gresham Chapel and Event Center. Yes. Uh, on January twenty first, one time only I performance. Get, yes. One time only. Okay. Okay. I get the privilege of directing that one. Oh, you too, do. So. God, you yeah. do keep busy. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. Yeah. Too yeah. Busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're almost out of time. So, Kathy, tell me, tell me one one thing about the the theater that you think people should know. That. Uh, when you come in and you see the smiles of the people there, 
it's genuine. Oh, good, good. That's a nice thing to know. Yeah. That's a nice thing to know. I we believe it. It sounds like you have a really fun time. What about you, Tim? What else do you want to add before we're out of time here? Well, just on Leading Ladies again, I think it is one of the funniest shows it I have ever, hilarious. ever yeah. seen. And it is nonstop laughing, especially the second act, which is just <laughs> so, constant. So like Kathy said, exercise those, yes. those smile yes. muscles, yes. otherwise you'll have sore jaws. In our warm-up, we jaws. try to tell everyone, yes. you know, huh, you know, get that mouth <laughs> wide and get yeah. an exercise. Well, good. <laughs> we'll be looking forward to that. It sounds great. I'm glad you're getting good reviews and that you're, you're doing so well. That's really good yes. to hear. Well, thanks very much, both of you, for being my guests Thank tonight you. on Community Hotline. Don't go away. We'll be right back with just a few special messages from Community Hotline. Back again for just a moment. I'm Monica Weitzel here on Community Hotline. I wanted to let you know about a couple things that are coming up. Here at Metro East Community Media, we have a lot of great uh, partnerships, and one of them is with the Portland Columbia Symphony Orchestra. They're a terrific uh, nonprofit organization here in the area. They have a couple of uh, performances coming up. One is called A Holiday Gift of Music Concert. It takes place December 2nd at 3 p.m. at the Good Shepherd Community Church in Boring, Oregon. And uh, that's something you might want to check out. Another one is a fundraiser they're going to be having this holiday season called The Little Black Dress Goes Holiday. And that's for you ladies in the area. So get out your little black dresses. It's going to be at Riverview Community Bank in Gresham on Thursday, December 13th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. It's a very nominal charge. It's happy hour and you'll have a great time. Raise some money for the Portland Columbia Symphony Orchestra. We've enjoyed having you here tonight to talk with our theater groups. We hope you turn in, tune in next week. I'm Monica Weitzel and this is Community Hotline. What does it take to start something? A little time. A little exercise. A little laugh. A little adventure. A little help. That's all it takes to make a big impact. As he always talks about, he had people in his life that really helped him out, and he wants to be that person in my life. Just like he is, I was like that at 14. I know exactly what it means yeah. to be a 14-year-old guy. I think that's why we have a good relationship. It's fun and cool and nice. You get to see like how personality develops. Our friendship is good. At Big Brothers Big Sisters, 
A little bit of your support can go a long way towards making matches like these happen. Start something today at bigbrothersbigsisters.org slash start something.